two just PCs are on the way, like Icon Vintage and Player of the Month Bellingham, and people are starting to panic. But because of all of these new leaks, I've got some investments that are gonna go up anyway. Welcome to Trading the Glory. If you're looking for cheap and reliable EAFC 24 coins, look no further than my new partner, Footloot, and use my code ELITE, E L Y Y T, for an extra 6% at checkout. I grinded Evolution's Expert, which gives us these two packs, and if you guys drop a like on today's video, I'm sure we'll pack a Centurions in this pack. 83 rated cards are actually all going for 1.6K or more because of new SBCs. So no matter what we get out of this pack, we can at least use it. It's gonna be from Barcelona. Who do we got? That's actually a pretty high rated card. 89 rated, we will take that. But now the big boy, 85 plus times two. If we don't get a walkout out of this, I'm gonna be very disappointed. It's a German cam. It's gotta be Musiala, has to be Musiala. It can't be Mo. Oh my God, EA, every time it's not Musiala. At least it's two walkouts, but we did not get a Centurion, which means you didn't like the video, did you? What the heck, man? That fodder might come in handy as we're getting some big player SBCs over the next couple of days. Foot Centurion's icon, Vidic, coming to the game. If you've already done that Laurent Blanc SBC, you might as well add Vidic and have the most overpowered back line in the game. And then Jude Bellingham is coming as La Liga's player of the month, which should drop in the next 48 hours-ish. But is it gonna be 89 rated? I don't know. We saw his Trailblazers card as 88, and if they're going to count that as an IRL performance-based card, which it kind of is, it's the best players to start the season, then he'll get 89. But if not, his most uh, recent inform is 87, and unfortunately, despite scoring a brace in El Clasico, he is not going to be in Team of the Week. We've got some good cards in here. You've got the likes of Harry Kane, Erling Haaland. You've got Wijnaldum, who might be decent. And Kedia for his hat trick. Lozano, the pace demon. There are some cards in there that are definitely good, but there's no Jude Bellingham, who I argue probably deserves it more than anybody this week. And I guess EA are leaving him out just because he already is getting that Player of the Month SBC. So we'll see if they end up making him 88 or 89 at this rate, if Jude Bellingham continues performing the way he is, and EA actually give him the upgrades he deserves, like this team of the week, he probably would end up with a 106 rated card by the end of the year. So I guess EA are trying to pace him. Nonetheless, fodder is on the way up because of SBCs we've already seen, like the Max Hero upgrade, and we've also seen some upgrade SBCs that have finally brought 83s and especially 84s off the ground, making a lot of profit for us. Now, if you guys have watched the last couple of episodes of Trading to Glory, uh, you guys would have seen that I invested pretty heavily in 86 rated cards, which right now I'm listing for lazy buyers at nearly 14,000 coins. And if you just take Tony Kroos by himself, we made over 80,000 coins because we bought them all for 10K average. We did snipe a couple for a little less than 10K, but we're making over 3,000 coins on every single card, maybe 4K on a few of them. And we sold, well, quite a few of these Tony Kroos cards. And we've still got some cards getting listed, Kante, Undoan, Delict, Dybala, and all of that. All of the saved 84s that we've acquired and still had in our club, we're listing for lazy buyers at about 3.8. And then, as you can see, we've got 83s. And this leads us into the first trading method of the day. If you guys are on a low budget or medium budget, this will be awesome for you guys to make some coins. And it's actually very, very easy. As you can see, 83 sell for 1,800. You may have to relist once or twice. I'd, I only had to relist once for a couple of the cards to sell. But as you can see on my transfer targets, I've been bidding on, well, Halland, but we'll get to that a little later. I've been bidding on Jekko, and I've got quite a few of him for 1,400 coins. We've got a few Galtons for 1,400 coins, and I think there might be still some expiring and we did get outbid on a few, but as you can see, the card for 1700 right here got bought at 1700. And so if you list for about 1700 coins, it's going to sell on the first hour basically every single time, maybe towards the end of the hour, towards the lazy buyers. But 
If you list for 1800, you may have to relist, but most of them will sell for 1800 on the first hour. So we're going to click assign all, and we're actually going to list these cards for 1800 coins each and make about 300 coins per card, maybe a little bit more than 300 coins per card. So that's 300 coins right there. We list another for 800. That's another 300 coins. We list another. That's another 300 coins. And you can see how this adds up very, very quickly on a low budget. If you guys have anywhere between 50 to 200,000 coins, this is a very effective method because you can fill your transfer list all the way with 100 cards that are 83 rated and just list these cards for lazy buyers because anybody who is out doing the uh, upgrade SBC for the 84 plus times two. There are a lot of people that'll just throw the player into the team and then uh, look at compare price. So for Ed and Jekko, for example, we'll throw him into the team and you'll see that if you just cl uh, click on compare price on this card in the squad screen, it's only going to take you to the first pages. And anything that's expiring, you're going to look for the lowest uh cards and 1700 right there is one of the lowest prices on Ed and Jekko. So you would probably buy that card right there. And with that being said, a lot of the time, 1800, 1900 is the cheapest that it, uh, these people see and they end up spending a lot more. And I'd say this worked closer to content time even better than any other time of the day, just because there's more people online, more people active doing these squad building challenges. So that's the idea behind those low budget lazy buyers making you guys some coins. Now you might say, Elite, why are you selling 86 rated fodder if you've got big SBCs coming? There's going to be more demand. And if you're holding fodder, it's not a bad idea either. I'm looking at great profit right now, 4,000 coins nearly per card. I decided to take my coins because I've got some ideas on where I want to put it next. But holding this is also a decent idea and I might even get back in after Division Rival rewards come out tonight and when we get marquee matchups tomorrow. So there's more supply coming. I might be able to get in on better deal and plus, I'm not listing this for market price anyway. These cards go for about 12250 or 125 k right now. Tony Crow shut up because he's going to be in Fut Centurion's team too. And people are going crazy for out-of-pack investing hype. And it doesn't even make sense for Tony Crows because he's fodder. He's going to fluctuate with those 86s no matter what, especially this late in the game. And when I say this late in the game, I mean the game has been out for over a month. There's not going to be like a complete desert of Tony Cross is on the market. There's still going to be a decent amount of people listing this card because people have had over a month to pack them. It's not like week two where they've only been in packs for a few days and then they go out of packs for a full week. That's significant. That makes rarity. It's not going to be that rare of an 86. If, you know, 86s in general are going for 12K, he might go for 12.5, maybe just because he's out of packs. But that's kind of the idea on why I sold kind of into the hype for Tony Kroos, that leak for him getting into Fut Centurion's team too. But also these other ones are just selling for more than what their market price is. I could buy a Conte right now for 12,250, which is way less than 5% uh, of what I sold for. So that's covering tax already. Speaking of division rival rewards, that comes out in the morning on Thursday, 4 a.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. in in the UK. Actually, now that the time has changed, I think it's 8 a.m. in the UK right now. I don't know how long that's going to last before we change our time. I I can't keep up with all the time zones, but it's coming out in the morning. And what the idea is, is because Griezmann worked so well for us and we made like 350,000 coins on him over the last couple of days, we got in early, early in the week. But even if you got in right about here, you made some good coins because this card on Thursday, right before Division Rival Rewards, went up from 113,000 coins all the way to 120,000 coins. And that's the average for the hour, of course. And going into Friday content rose even more. Now, if you get in before Division Rival Rewards on some of these out-of-pack inform investments, you might be making a decent amount of coins, at least enough to make some profit and get over that hump of 5% tax. Erling Haaland right now is 185,000 coins. He's going to be one of the big boys in this team of the week, given the fact that he had a brace and an assist in the Manchester Derby this weekend. And I've got a few of him already on my transfer list. You saw me get one for 180,000 on bid here. Uh, earlier in the video, I've also got a few more just sitting 
on the transfer list right now. I've got one, two right here for 181 and 180. I've also got one more in my club that I'm actually using as striker for 180,000 coins. So I'm hoping he goes up to like 195, maybe closer to 200 after Div Rival Rewards, and we can just take our profit. We don't have to hold into the weekend, although it should kind of work out as what we've seen in the past is that it does. Last week, we saw our real first non-dynamic promo of the year, which means that these cards can't get upgraded. And because they can't get upgraded, they're not going to fluctuate like Road to the Knockouts did. And if we look at Andrew Robertson, a card that was a lot of people's favorite investment of the week because he is, you know, one of the better left backs, probably the only good left back option from the Premier League unless you went with Rise. This card's not bad, but it's not dynamic. And with all of the panic and all of the supply that happens every single Friday throughout the course of November, it just isn't a card that's going to be rising a ton out of packs. And as you can see, he did rise a little bit out of packs initially, but not enough to make profit, and he hasn't really risen since. The higher tier cards dropped between Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, went down in price before starting to go up out of packs. That's Young Min's son, for example. So when it comes to Foot Centurions, most of these cards I'm not touching on a Wednesday. There's no point in me buying that card, hoping that it does well out of division rival rewards because bad things can happen investing in some of these cards right now. But there are a few that are catching my eye. One of them is Furland Mendy. High budget card, but if Jude Bellingham comes out as a very good value SBC, we could see very good complement links rise to that card, similar to how we saw with Rodrigo's SBC earlier this year, like Luka Modric, who I'm not saying is a bad investment still with his RTTK, but what I am saying is that he does play the same position as Bellingham, whereas the Furland Mendy does not play the same position. So you're looking at, you know, trying to get for as close to a million coins or less on this card. He's about a million 30K right now and has been as low as 940K. So are we getting in at the best time? Probably not, but we should still end up making some coins. As long as we time this buy correctly, I would be patient with this. Don't rush into it and make sure you try to get the best deal. And then there's a lower budget investment that actually has nothing to do with Jude Bellingham's Player of the Month. And I just have an intuition about this Lewis Dunk card. It's low budget to medium budget. He's only going for like 42,000 coins right now. He has been as low as 30K on the day he was released. He dropped way lower than what a lot of people expected. Uh, and then he actually rebounded quite well because he can actually be used in this uh, Centurion's upgrade, which takes him from an 85 to an 87. And given the fact that he's already a pretty decent center back that's English in the Premier League, getting that upgrade and the fact that the Centurion's upgrade does last in the game for quite some time, this card out of packs could do well because of that Centurion's upgrade SBC or evolution, excuse me, because you have 18 days actually to start that evolution and it expires in 25 days. So that's nearly three weeks, I guess a little over two weeks of this card being out of packs, whereas people can still look at it, say, I want to upgrade that in the Centurion's upgrade, which to be honest, isn't even one of the most difficult upgrades. You need to win four squad battle matches. You need to win four squad, but it's like eight games, maybe 12 games. I, I haven't done the math exactly. I think it's eight games to complete. When you compare that to some of the other evolutions we've seen where you need to play like 40 or 80 games, it's ridiculous uh, how many games some of these require, where this one's kind of easy. So a casual could even go out and do this one and get it done in like an hour or two. So not terribly difficult right there. So that's something to consider with an out of pack investment just because of that evolution's demand. But that's it for today's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching to the end. If you did make it to the end, go ahead and comment P-O-T-M hype for that new La Liga player of the month, Jude Bellingham coming out very soon. I'm gonna make sure to drop a heart on everybody's comment who does so. Drop a like on the video and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new. We actually, 76% of people that watch my videos aren't subscribed. Let's make sure that's not you. See you guys in the next one. Peace out.